Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 Mumbai studio. I'm Ekta Batran. You're watching your stocks this afternoon. Well, it's turning out to be a session where we are seeing some amount of strength in coming into the markets. So we have the mid cap index, which is held steady with a gain of around six tenths of a percent. Um, but the only niggling worry is the advanced decline ratio, which has now turned into the declining side. So we have more stocks declining as compared to advancing. And uh, that was not the case through the trading session. So as you can see, there is a little bit of a crisscross, which is probably going to take place um, if in case this trend continues. But joining us this afternoon, we have Rajat Bose joining in on the technicals. Parthiv Shah joining in to talk about the fundamentals of uh, the market. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for very uh, thank you for joining in this afternoon. Rajat, before we get to the queries, just wanted your take on the markets. Um, you know, tomorrow is expiry as well, but we seem to be quite steady today. Good afternoon, and belated happy holy to both you and Parthiv. Uh, now coming to talk about the market, what I would say is that uh, see, Ekta, tomorrow, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is the last trading session of this financial year. So there is likely to be some kind of a propping up of the Nifty and other indices uh, because uh, the mutual funds generally uh, try to show good NAV uh, on the last day. Uh, it is a, a regular affair more or less uh, to that extent they can. So chances are that uh, even if the advances are less now than the decliners, uh, there would not be much of a downturn. On the other hand, what I'm expecting is that since it has already crossed the 20-day exponential moving average, which is at 22,161, and currently the Nifty is at 22,180, it might cross 22,200 and uh, sustain there. And tomorrow also, there would not be much of a, uh, much of a uh, problem because uh, there would be more buying uh, tomorrow. And as it is, the technicals are also suggesting that the short-term trend has reversed and uh, chances are you will see higher levels. Even Bank Nifty, once it crosses 47,000, you will see good amount of traction. You have already talked about CNX Midcap doing well. Not just CNX Midcap, even the Nifty Junior is 470 points up. So all in all, it's all good signs out there at least as of now. Okay. All right. Uh, well, some negative news coming in on Lupin, which has received a tax demand order worth over 470-odd crores for 2021-22, um, as you can see. Well, let's get in some queries now. Shalini Punj writes to us from New Delhi. She has an investment query. She wants to know if she can invest in public sector banks particularly State Bank of India. Well, the Nifty PSU Bank index itself is up around 20-odd percent this year, so it's not done too badly. Uh, it's done pretty well. But what would you recommend on SBI, which is, you know, marginally, it's underperformed as compared to the index itself. It's gained around 14, 15-odd percent. Uh, Parthiv, over to you on this one. Good afternoon, Ekta, Rajita, and our viewers. See, Ekta, there is no two ways or two doubts about the fact that most of the public sector banks have had a massive cleanup since last many years. They have written off a lot of uh, non-performing loans. And more importantly, I think their capital adequacy has improved and the levels are looking at one of the finest at this juncture. And since the last one year, we are witnessing very good loan disbursements happening from even the likes of SBI. If you see the granularity of their earnings, I think uh, they have been dispersing loans at a very rapid pace, despite having such a massive mammoth balance sheet. And I think uh, they performed extremely well last quarter. Yes, uh, there was one particular account which caused some problems, but still, I believe that the credit costs are very much in control. And more importantly, the future guidance that SBS has given to have announcements and improvements in their ROAs and ROAs over the next two, three years, that trajectory looks easily achievable, according to us. And again, we should not forget the fact that uh, big PSUs like uh, SBI or Bank of Baroda or Kendra Bank, they have this uh, uncanny knack of raising a lot of funds at a very reasonable cost. And at this juncture, when a lot of the private sector peers are also kind of fighting uh, in terms of the liability franchisee, uh, public sector banks have done reasonably well. So our sense is it's a good time to be invested in the banking sector and more importantly in such quality public sector banks. Okay, all right. And technically, what would you recommend, um, uh, Rajat? Do you think that there's a catch-up when it comes to SBI? 
the SBI, I think the short-term downtrend is already through uh, because from 7th of March, 793, it came down to 719 uh, uh, recently. And thereafter, over the last, say, five trading sessions, it is much above that low. But it needs to take out the 50-day moving average, which is around 754. If it were to sustain above 754, then you can expect 770, if not the earlier high. Uh, so, uh, so long as the 50-day moving average, which is at 747, the in, uh, investor should continue to hold on. And if he or she wants to buy it, one can buy at current levels as well as above, uh, say, 754, where the 20-day moving average is located. And long term, it is not a problem for state bank it is on an uptrend okay long term not a problem for sbi it is on an uptrend as you can see there's an outperformance which has come in in the past 12 months for the nifty psu bank index which has rallied almost 100 percent 93 odd percent as compared to state bank of india which is up around 46 odd percent but let's get in another question now manju writes to us from new delhi she holds 20 shares of titan which she's bought at 3000 so she's sitting on a profit on that one. She wants to know what to do, whether she should stay invested or sell. Well, uh, close to its 52-week high, but it's corrected from those levels of around 3,885 odd. Uh, Rajat, what would you te technically suggest on this counter? Do you think that it has more upside? And what would your target and stop loss be? See, the uh, technical stop loss should be below the 200-day exponential moving average if it is an investment call. And if it is a short-term call, then the stop loss should be just below the 3,600 mark. And now I expect that if it is a long-term uh, investment, then one should actually continue to buy it here. If you are holding, continue to hold and you can buy more. But uh, uh, very hefty gains immediately are not uh, no, not really seen on the technicals, but once it crosses 3,800 level, it will gather momentum. Okay, all right. And what would your recommendation be on Titan? Um, it's not done too much this year, but uh, what would you recommend, um, Parthiv? See, uh, we are beat on Titan. Uh, very frankly, I think long back, I recollect uh, when they were doing revenues around 22,000 crore, the management had guided for revenue rendered of around 50,000 crores in the next three to five years. And as a matter of fact, they've achieved almost 46,000 crores. Uh, our sense is that this is a consumer facing company from the stable of the Tata Group, where they have all the potential to touch a revenue of around 1 lakh crore by 2028, 2030. And I think that gives us the confidence that you know the market can easily pencil in a 15% sort of a growth in terms of the revenue. And more importantly, we have seen how well they have kind of managed their cost and managed their margins uh, with new product innovations. And more importantly, in the jewelry segment, they've retained a fantastic market share and they're really doing well in that segment. Even the eyewear and the watches segment, also they're catching up and I think doing extremely well. So this is a mammoth and more importantly, they have almost 10 manufacturing units and they have almost three crore members in the kitty. Uh, they have just 420 town presence. I think that is still very, very small for a country like India and they're expanding that rapidly. So I would suggest uh, somebody holding Titan at 3000 levels to hold out for the long run. Okay, all right. So to hold on for the longer term, that's the word coming in on the fundamentals of Titan. Ragini Jain writes to us from Mangalore. She holds five shares of LIC, which she's bought at 700 rupees. So she's sitting on a profit, but she wants to know what to do, whether she should buy more or whether she should take her profits from this one. Uh, well, what would you recommend on this one, Parthiv? Um, you know, it's rallied significantly from its 52 week low of around 530 odd rupees. But do you think it has more to go? She should probably buy at higher levels than what her previous price was? The one big relief that uh, LIC shareholders got is in terms of the upcoming supply. Because I think uh, the market always feared that uh, because the government has a long way to go in terms of uh, reducing the shareholding to the shareholding norms of 75%. And LIC as such being almost a five and a half lakh crore sort of a huge giant company, uh, where will all this supply get absorbed? So that was, I think, a big override. But I think they got a big relief in terms of getting a lot of time for achieving that. Not only that, uh, LIC has been improving its product mix uh, in terms of the value of new business margins. Quarter and quarter, we have seen good improvements. 
Uh, and again, if I were to compare with the peer sets, uh, despite being the market leader in the life insurance space, LIC is quoting at a price to admitted value of around 1.2 times, which is, I think, extremely cheap as compared to uh, likes of HDFC Life, which is at 2.7 times, uh, ICICI Prudential, which is at 2.6 times. So I think uh, it's quoted at less than half the valuation than most of its peers, despite having such huge uh, size and uh, capacity and market share. So our sense is that LIC is a good bet here. PSUs are creating wealth now. Uh, there's a huge change of mindset in terms of governance for a lot of these PSUs. And LIC, I think, uh, being the market leader, should do well over them. Okay, all right. A huge change in perception for a lot of this, these PSEs and that uh, point is taken on board. Well, on the technicals, Rajat, would you have a recommendation on an LIC? The LIC's uh, medium-term downtrend is not yet over. After touching the uh, nearly 1,200 kind of levels, it is coming down. It might come down even further because both the 50-day and the 20-day as well as the 9-day moving average all are going down. So it is in a downtrend. <coughs> Otherwise, all these moving averages would not have been going down. And they are quite sharply down. Uh, the current few days of upswing that you have seen in Delicy, it's a bearish flag. And actually, we might see a fall uh, where LIC might come down to something like 750, uh, 740 kind of levels. Around that level, one can buy. But if somebody is holding for long term, definitely continue to hold. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's on LIC. But let's get in another question now. We have Kamal Singh, who writes us from New Delhi, holds 10 shares of m, &M which is bought at 900 rupees. So sitting on a good profit there and wants to know the future prospects of his investment. Um, well, what do the future prospects look like? Technically, he's doing very well on his investment. Uh, do you think that he should probably take some profits off the table or maybe even uh, invest a little more? What would you recommend, Rajat? Well, if one is an investor, then there is no reason that one should get out of uh, m, m right now because unless it falls below 1650 uh, the long-term investors should not uh, ditch the stock uh, but if one is actually looking for a short-term play or a medium-term play then uh, it can come down to something like 1800 levels then uh, the buy would be uh, uh, it would be a much safer uh, level to buy so not buy at current level, but if it comes to around 1800 level, then definitely do buy. Okay. All right. And Parthiv, what about you, m, &M uh, You think maybe take some profits off the table or stay on? See, I think for long-term investors, I think it's a fantastic company to own. Uh, I was just going through uh, their latest investor presentation, Ekta, and I think a lot of granularity of data they're given in terms of a lot of businesses that m, &M Post under it because MM is also the holding company besides the automotive uh, major of uh, Mahindra True. And a lot of such non core and loss making businesses they've hyped off and improved the return ratios. And a lot of new age businesses also they are focusing on under this business. Even their uh, lacking a real estate business, which is a subsidiary of this company, has been uh, showing very good results. Uh, there's been change of management uh, in the Tech Mahindra, which is again a subsidiary of Eminem. And also the Eminem Financial is also now turning around and doing well. Plus the core automotive business, especially the farm equipment segment, they have increased their market share by almost 400 basis points and sitting at around 42% in the farm equipment segment, overall market share, which is very healthy uh hoping for better results there because of the rural distress right now ongoing but uh, i think the management is confident they should do better going ahead and even the passenger vehicle segment especially in the SUV space they've regained their mojo and uh, regained a lot of lost market share so over there also they're doing well uh, we believe at 18 times forward multiple i think mnm as a stock is not at all expensive and for long-term investors a good good deal okay all right uh well, some more news coming in on the pharma space. Ipka Labs has entered an agreement with Omexa Formulary for a biosimilar clone process development. So it seems to be quite a longer term uh, positive for them. So let's see. More details awaited. But nonetheless, uh, Ipka holding up with gain of around 6 tenths of percent. Take a break. More queries on the other side.
Welcome back. Well, just a couple of more details with regards to IPCA Labs. They've entered into a tech transfer agreement with Omexa Formulary, which like I mentioned, the agreement is for a biosimilar clone process development and knowledge transfer and is for the global markets. Under this agreement, IPCA will grant Omexa a non-exclusive right to research, develop, manufacture and market an anti-cancer biosimilar for the global market. The agreement shall enable Omexa to develop this anti-cancer biosimilar from early stages of devel development to clinical trials and subsequent commercial launch. So this is basically what the tie-up is. It's more of a longer term tie-up at this point in time, so you're not going to see the benefit immediately. But nonetheless, uh, biosimilars is probably an opportunity which all pharmaceutical companies will be exploring. A quick take on this, Parthav? I think interesting development, Ikta. I was also reading the press release and a lot of work is happening uh, in oncology and especially in the biosimilar space. Uh, such types, I think, bode well. Uh, IPCA was never in the reckoned with in terms of having any sort of pipeline for biosimilars, but I think they are moving into more of the value-added uh, side of the product. <coughs> IPCA sitting at 30,000 crore market cap, I think valuations are not very demanding and has a very good prox prospects going ahead. Okay, all right. So that's on IPCA. Let's get in another question now. Kritika writes to us from Patna. She holds 30 shares of Yes Bank at 15 rupees. Wants to know what to do, whether she should buy more or book profits at this point in time and uh, or probably even switch to a more profitable stock. Um, Rajat? Yes Bank, no? Yes, at 15 rupees. I would say uh, that it would be better to switch to some other stock because... This one had a flare and a, a kind of a big run from say 24 to 32, the 33 percent kind of move, but that has been adequately neutralized by the bears and uh, the time-wise the downswing lasted longer and now it is unable. It, it has been trying to take out the 50-day moving average. Uh, it has made already four or five attempts and not being able to take out. So it would be better to buy some other bank. Uh, my choice would be IDFC First Bank. I, I would like to uh, make a disclosure that I do not personally have IDFC First in my portfolio, but I have recommended to my clients to buy recently. Okay, all right. So that's on IDFC First Bank. Well, Suraj Kumar now writes to us from Pune. He holds 20 shares of IREDA, which he's bought at 100 rupees, wants to hold the stock for the longer term and is asking uh, what to do, whether he should exit at current levels or whether he should probably stay on. Um, can you uh, give me a sense on this one, Par uh, Parthav? Sure. See, it, uh, the biggest concern with uh, Ida is uh, in terms of you know, the valuations. Uh, no doubt, I think the prospects are extremely good for such companies because the government is talking of funding needs of upwards of 10 lakh crore over the next five years in the renewable energy space. And if you look at the current book size of IREDA, it's just sitting at around 55,000 crore. Uh, no doubt, uh, this is going to grow very rapidly. I won't be surprised if it grows no less than upwards of 25%. So even if I were to pencil in that number and abstract the value for three years down the line, still in terms of price to multiple on a forward basis it is quoting at around 2.2 times which is extremely expensive so that's the biggest concern and uh, generally we tend to see that uh, whenever stock has such a good run and even after listing and still this uh, shareholding norm suggests that the government might come for more supply i think wrong maybe at that juncture we can revalue how what the stock is quoting it and take a call but at this juncture i would suggest booking out in this company okay all right and rajat what about you on ireda it has uh, it made its debut on 29th of November last year. So not much data is available, only from a short term or medium term point of view. Uh, if it manages to get past 150 decisively, then only it becomes a buy. Otherwise, you wait for levels around 125 to buy a phrase because the downtrend is not yet over it seems. Okay, all right. That's an IREDA. Niranjan Avasti now writes to us from MP. He holds 20 shares, which he's bought of Bank of Baroda at 80 odd rupees. He wants to know what to do, whether he should book his profits or whether he should probably remain invested in Bank of Baroda. So he's bought it at around two, um, you know, his buy price is 80 odd rupees. So it's a good price that he's bought it at. Lot of uh, queries coming in on um, the entire 
PSU banking space. We had one on SBI and you know a couple of these on PSEs as well. But um, uh, Rajat, what would you recommend on, on Bank of Baroda? Do you think there's further upside on the technicals? I was betting on you uh, asking Ars Parsi because uh, from a technical point of view, uh, uh, Bank of Baroda, PNB, uh, at least in the short term, they are not looking anything great. In fact, there is some distribution pattern. Uh, it may come down at lower levels. I would say that, say, between 240 and 220, it would become far more attractive, uh, especially close to about one, 225, not at current levels. Because if it were to go down from here then and it breaks 240, then 220 is definitely a, a high probability event. Uh, so... I, I would wait. I would not say sell, but I would wait. Okay, all right. You would wait when it comes to Bank of Baroda. And Parthiv, would you also probably wait and watch when it comes to BOB? The investor's cost is just 80 bucks, and the back of the envelope calculation suggests that uh, they're sitting at a dividend yield of 6%, which is going to go up because I think the bank's financials have improved. And this is uh, one of the cheaper public sector banks quoting at around 1.1 1. 1 times forward multiple FY26 basis. Uh, our sense is that, yes, it may uh, time correct for a while, as Rajinda is suggesting, but if one has a two, three year horizon, even from your good upside is to be made until the upside is made, a six percent juicy dividend yield is waiting for the investor every year. So, that I think that should help uh, to stay on the stock. Okay, all right, so that's on uh, Bank of Baroda. Well, uh, Parthiv as well as Raja, thanks very much for joining in and giving us all of that perspective on various stocks and queries that we've had. Uh, thanks very much and hope you have a great afternoon. Well, um, for the markets, it's picked up a little bit of pace. So the Nifty is at the high point of the day. 21, uh, 22,180 is currently where it's at. We have the mid caps as well, which are holding steady. But like we've been talking about, it's mostly a large cap day in today's trading session. Yesterday was about the mid caps, but today it seems to be about the large caps, such as Reliance Industries, which is at the high point of the day after that pro positive brokerage report that came out. So that stock is up around 4 odd percent. We have Bajaj Auto, which has picked up pace and two is at the high point of the day, up three and a half odd percent. Following suit is that Maruti, Adani Pod, Sun Pharma, Bajaj Finance. So all of these stocks um, showing momentum on the upside, giving you a sense that there is money which is flowing in to the frontline nifty stocks at this point in time. On the downside, a couple of these IT names, so LTI Mindtree, which has lost around 21% this year, is down today. Hero Moto, Apollo, SBI, all of these stocks a bit sluggish at this point in time. Well, that's all the time that we have on the show, but do remember to email us your queries and we'll address them with our experts. Stay tuned. Closing Bell, up next.